Hello dear friends. Today we are going to read and understand the second part of the lesson Robinson Crusoe. In case you want to watch the video in which the first part of the lesson has been explained, you can refer to the links given below in the description or subscribe to our channel. In the first part of the lesson we had read how Robinson Crusoe's ship had been destroyed in a terrible storm. He had ended up reaching an island and was there all alone. He had made up his mind to go back to his ship which was sinking so that he could get some stuff from there that could be of use to him on the island. He wanted to do so before the ship sank completely. I plunged into the sea and made for the ship. At last, after a hard swim, I managed to reach it and discovered a rope hanging over the side. With great difficulty, I pulled myself up the rope and reached the deck. The storm had damaged everything. There were broken masts and torn sails and pieces of rope all over the ship. I went down into the cabins and found an axe. On deck again, I cut the masts and ropes and made myself a small raft. I managed to get this raft into the sea and tie it to the vessel with a rope. In this paragraph, Robinson Crusoe tells us that once he had made up his mind to go back to the ship and get certain supplies, he plunged, which means he jumped or dived into the sea. Then he made for the ship, which means that he started swimming in the direction of the ship. Now it was not easy for him to swim in the sea and reach the ship. First of all, it was difficult for him because of the storm that had been raging in the sea earlier. Secondly, it was difficult for him to swim to the ship because he was also very tired from the struggle of the previous night. He reached the ship somehow. Then he discovered, which means that he saw a rope hanging over the side of the ship. Now using that rope, he started climbing onto the ship. He pulled himself up the ship with great difficulty. He managed to reach the deck of the ship. The deck refers to the floor of the ship. Normally when we talk about the deck of the ship, we are talking about the top floor of the ship. Now when he reached the deck, he saw that the storm had completely destroyed the ship. He could see broken masts and torn sails and pieces of rope all over the ship. Now, if you remember from the previous video, mast refers to the wooden pole on which the sails are hung and sails refer to the big pieces of cloth which are hung on the masts to catch the wind. So the masts, that means the wooden poles were broken, the sails which means the big pieces of cloth hanging from the masts were torn and ropes were also broken and were lying in pieces all over the ship. So there was complete destruction on the ship. Now Robinson Crusoe went down into the cabins, that means the small rooms on the ship and he looked for an axe. Now why did he want an axe? He went back to the deck and he used the axe to cut the masts, the wooden poles, so that he could use the ropes and the pieces of wood to create a small raft. Now what do we mean by a raft? A raft basically refers to a structure which is made by tying pieces of wood together. It is not like a boat but it floats on water and you can sit on it and row it 
in one direction or the other. These are pictures of a raft which will help you to better understand what a raft is. Robinson Crusoe then managed to take the raft down from the ship into the sea and using a rope he tied the raft to the ship. The vessel over here refers to the ship. Why did he tie the raft to the ship? Because he was going to go back up on the ship to get the supplies that he wanted, to get the material that he wanted, which he would place on the raft and then go back to the island before the ship sank to the bottom of the sea. I found some of the seamen's boxes on board and filled them with stores, bread, rice, cheese and some wine. I also found some clothes and in the captain's cabin two guns, a pair of pistols and some powder and shot. All these I piled onto the raft and having found a broken oar, I cast off from the vessel and started for the shore. When I reached the sand, I carried the things up onto dry land. In this paragraph, Robinson Crusoe tells us that when he climbed back onto the ship, he started looking for useful things that could help him on the island. First of all, he found some seamen's boxes. They basically refer to big boxes or chests which are used by seamen to keep things. Now, he took those boxes and first of all, he filled them with food, which is very understandable because the first thing that a man wants to do is fill his stomach with food. So he filled the boxes with stores. Now what does the word stores refer to? It refers to the food ration that he put into the boxes, which included bread, rice, cheese and he even managed to get some bottles of wine. Now, after this, on the ship he found some clothes and that also he filled into the boxes. Then he went to the captain's cabin and over there he found two guns and a pair of pistols. Let's notice how Robinson Crusoe mentions guns and pistols separately. This is because there is a difference between guns and pistols. Guns are bigger in size and pistols are smaller, which can be put into our pocket or carried on our belt. So he found two guns and a pair of pistols means that he found two pistols, small guns. Alright, in addition to that, he found some powder and shot. Powder and shot refers to the ammunition that he is going to put in the guns and pistols. So we are talking about a time when people did not actually have bullets. Alright, so they used to have the ammunition powder which they used to put in the guns and pistols. Alright, with which they would shoot. Let's notice how Robinson Crusoe tells us that all this ammunition, the guns, pistols, powder and shot, he found in the captain's cabin. Because when you are on a ship, then even if you are a member of the crew, that means member of the group of people working on the ship, you cannot keep any types of arms and ammunition with you. The arms and ammunition can only be kept with the captain of the ship. Let's also realize that how Robinson Crusoe, even in this difficult time, is using his presence of mind. He has taken food for himself and clothes and arms and ammunition which can help him to defend himself. So very intelligently, he has collected things of the greatest importance for him. Now all these things he piled, that means he kept one on top of the other, on the raft. And then he also managed to find a broken oar. 
If you look at the picture, you can realize that an oar refers to a paddle with which we row a boat or in this case a raft. So he took the broken oar and then he cast off. That means he left the ship and started rowing his raft towards the shore of the island which he had reached. When he reached the sand, that means the shore of the island, he collected all the things and carried them up onto dry land, which means he took them a little into the island so that they would not get carried away by the waves on the shore. The next morning, I walked along the shore and up a little hill. From there, I could see that I was on an island. I was a prisoner without a friend in the world. There was no one living on the island but wild beasts. The next day, I went back across the sea and brought more stores from the ship. Every day I toiled. I brought tools, wood, rope, nails, sails and clothes, guns and ammunition and sugar and flour and bread. In one of the wooden boxes, I found gold and silver coins. The sunshine made them sparkle. What use are you to me? I asked. Everyone in the world desires you but me. The next morning, Robinson Crusoe took a walk along the shore and he went up a little hill. Now, once again we see how Robinson Crusoe has a lot of sense. He's a very intelligent man. Why did he take a walk along the shore? Because he wanted to explore the place which he had reached. He went up a small hill because he wanted to reach a height from which he could have a view of the place where he was. When he reached the top of the hill, from there he could see that he had reached an island. He realized that he was a prisoner there because as far as he could see, he could not spot another piece of land. So there was nowhere that he could go. He was surrounded by the sea. On that island, he had absolutely no friend. This means that he was the only person on that island. There was no other human being on that island. So, other than him, the only living beings on the island were wild beasts. That means wild animals. This made him feel very sad. The next day, he went back across the sea and brought more stores, which means more supplies from the ship. So, he realizes the importance of getting as many useful things as he can from the ship. Every day he toiled, that means every day he worked very hard in reaching the ship and collecting things and then rowing the raft back to the island. On his trips, he got very tired but he never gave up. He realized the importance of collecting as many things as he could from the ship. So he brought tools, wood, rope, nails, sails and clothes. He even brought guns and ammunition which would help him defend himself against wild animals. He also brought all food items that he possibly could. In one of the wooden boxes on the ship, he found gold and silver coins. Normally when we find gold and silver coins, that too in a large quantity, we feel very happy. These gold and silver coins were sparkling in the sun. But the sight of this treasure, the sight of the gold and silver coins did not make Robinson Crusoe happy. Because he was on an island where there was no other human being. Animals are not interested in gold and silver. So, being rich with the gold and silver did not mean anything to him. That's why he said that those gold and silver coins 
were useless for him because he could not use them to lead a better life. When I got back to my island, I noticed that the sky was black. Great clouds rolled up from the west. The rain poured down. I saw the ship out at sea rise and then sink beneath a huge wave. During the next few months, I busied myself in making a house with a strong stockade round it. I used one of the sails from the ship for the roof. I cut down tree trunks and carried them to the house and slowly built a strong stockade to keep out wild animals. In this paragraph, Robinson Crusoe tells us that when he reached the island after collecting things from the ship, he noticed that another storm was approaching. How did he know that an, another storm was coming up? He noticed this because the sky had turned black, which means that the sky had become very dark. Great clouds, which means huge, very big clouds, could be seen coming in from the west side. And it started raining heavily. When we say that the rain poured down, it means that it was raining very heavily. During this storm, Robinson Crusoe saw that his ship finally sank beneath the sea. He saw that a huge wave rose in the sea and it caused the ship to sink. Now, this is very important because this means that now Robinson Crusoe will not be able to make any further visits to the ship and get more stores or more supplies from the ship. Does this mean that Robinson Crusoe now started leading a leisurely life doing nothing on the island? No. Robinson Crusoe was very hardworking and intelligent. Now he immediately started making a house for himself. It did not take Robinson Crusoe a few days, but it took him a few months to build a house for himself. He kept himself very busy in those few months to make the house. He built the house with a strong stockade around it. Stockade means a tall fence. So he is very intelligent. He made a house with a tall fence so that the wild animals on the island could not enter his house. He used all the supplies that he had got from the ship to construct his house. He used the sail from the ship to create the roof of his house. He also cut down tree trunks and carried them to the house and slowly built his tall fence which was pretty strong to make sure that wild animals would not enter his house. The months passed in hard work and one day I set out to explore the whole island. The journey took me three days and when I got to the other side of the island I found a delightful valley. There were wild grapes and limes and I collected a quantity of these and took them back to my house. One day, in the forest not far from my house, I found some wild goats. I was just about to shoot one when I saw at my feet a baby goat. I picked it up and carried it home with me. In a few days, it became quite tame and after that, it never left my sight. It took Robinson Crusoe a few months to ready his house and those were months of a lot of hard work. Now, once his house was completed, he decided to explore the whole island. That means, he decided to travel through the island so that he would become more aware of the island where he was living. Now, this is not a small island. It was a big island. And that is why taking a round of the whole island took Robinson Crusoe 
थ्री होल डेज वेन ही गॉट टू दर साइड ऑफ द आईलैंड फ्रॉम वेर ही लिव्ड ही सॉ दैट ओवर देर देर वॉज अ डिलाइटफुल विच मीन्स अ वेरी प्लेजेंट अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वैली एंड इन दैट वैली देर वर वाइल्ड ग्रेप्स एंड लाइम्स सो ही कलेक्टेड अ गुड क्वान्टिटी ऑफ वाइल्ड ग्रेप्स एंड लाइम्स एंड टुक दैम बैक टू हिज हाउस नाउ वन डे इन दी फॉरेस्ट he also saw some wild goats he wanted to shoot one wild goat maybe so that he could cook it and eat it but then he saw a small baby goat close to his feet and he picked up the baby goat and took it back to his home in some time that little goat became tame which means that it became domesticated and after that it would always be found next to robinson crusoe which means it would always follow him around like a pet so this goat sort of became a companion for robinson crusoe after a year or two on the island i decided to make a small boat i chose the wood carefully and cut and worked the timber for many months I made a sail from some of the canvas I had brought on shore from the ship and with a good wind the boat sailed well. I taught myself how to make pots out of mud and how to make them hard and durable by burning them. I grew some corn and rice and also some wheat and I taught myself to make bread. My life on the island was a happy one. I had a good house plenty to eat and plenty of work to do in this paragraph robinson crusoe tells us how he always kept himself busy in doing constructive work on the island after spending a year or two on the island you remember how it took him a few months to build a house so now we realize that one or two years have passed and robinson crusoe has been living all alone on that island he has only that little goat that he had brought and domesticated as company so after spending a year or two on the island he is not very sure about the time that has passed he decided to make a small boat and he made this boat very carefully and wholeheartedly first of all he chose the material the wood very carefully all right so he would choose the trees that he would cut down very carefully he would cut them down and work on the timber that means work on the wood for many months so that he could perfect them to create his boat to make a sail for his boat he used the canvas that he had brought on the shore from his ship in which he had originally reached that island after his ship had been destroyed so when a good wind that means when a strong wind would be blowing the boat sailed well so he had constructed a good boat for himself now on that island robinson crusoe taught himself to do a lot of things he taught himself indicates that there was nobody else on that island who could teach him things so he was learning things by trying them on his own and he learned how to make pots out of mud he also learned how to make them hard and durable that means long lasting by burning them in fire he also learned farming he learned how to grow co- grow corn and rice he even grew some wheat on the island and through the method of trial and error he even learned how to make bread for himself now he was not depressed on the island he in fact says that his life on the island was a happy one which shows his very positive approach towards life he felt that he had a good life because he had a good house for himself he had enough to eat and he also had a lot of work to do for example his farming making his pots making bread for himself and he even keeps constructing new things like his house his boat etc 
One day I was walking along the seashore thinking about my home across the seas when I suddenly looked down there on the sand in front of me was a clear footprint it was not mine but the footprint of another man in this paragraph robinson crusoe tells us that one fine day he was walking along the seashore and he was thinking about his home across the seas that means his home that he had before he reached that island and suddenly he looked down towards the sand there he saw a very clear footprint and he realized that the footprint was not his but it was the footprint of another man this was one of the most important things that happened to him on that island up till then he had been living on the island all alone but that footprint indicated that now there was another man on the island to know who that man was and what happened between him and robinson crusoe you will have to read the actual novel because the lesson ends here but let me give you a little idea the footprint was of a man whom robinson crusoe later named as friday that's a very interesting name and you should read the story to find out why he named him friday with this we have come to the end of the chapter robinson crusoe i hope that you all have been able to better understand the lesson through this video please do like and subscribe to our channel